It's the Avengers, you mewling quins. Hello everyone, this is B Harper from Supermassy.com and as you can see, I'm gonna review The Avengers. The Avengers hit in 2012 and it hit hard. The hype campaign and everything leading up to it was just absolutely phenomenal. You couldn't look like two meters down the street without seeing some sort of Avengers reference like when you go when you went out into town or when you uh, checked on the television or when you heard on the radio the Avengers were everywhere now although the Avengers was as big as it was you can't forget that the story was incredibly basic okay because you had Loki wanting the Tesseract a very ancient and powerful object now he goes around and you know runs amok and he does what Loki does and he opens another wormhole and he invites a, an alien race to uh, you know invade the planet. It's a very sort of a basic concept that we've seen all the time but what elevates the Avengers from being just merely eye candy are the characters. The characters that you have grown to know over the past six or seven previous films. The Avengers works primarily as a character piece. Now, that's not to say that it is an in-depth analysis of the human heart and, you know, is, is the Hulk truly sad on the inside and everything like that? Well, um, actually, for the record, he, he's always angry, as, uh, as he says. But the fact of the matter is, The Avengers is incredibly simplistic in its plot, but what manages to lift it above and beyond what it could have been are the people involved, right? And those people are... Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Mark Ruffalo, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, Stellan Skarsgård, Jeremy Renner, Tom Hiddleston, Kobe Smulders, Clark Gregg, your grandmother, you know. <laughs> oh, God. You know, yeah, the, the characters in The Avengers are what truly makes this film work. And I'm not going to deny that if you didn't have those characters and if you didn't have the snappy script and, you know, that the wonderful chemistry that the actors have with each other, you probably wouldn't have had a good movie. Okay, I think we can all admit that these days. And considering that the only thing that can possibly surpass this film is the Avengers Age of Ultron. And I've heard through, uh, the, through the grapevine that Age of Ultron has become suitably more complicated in its story. But once again, I, I don't know anything, so please don't worry about spoilers because you won't be getting any. But back to the movie! <laughs> um, there's really nothing much I can tell about the plot that you don't already know because it's very meat and potatoes. But you have the characters and also you have remarkable action set pieces, especially when it comes to the Hulk. The Hulk is given so much depth and so much dimension in this movie because of Mark Ruffalo's performance, because of the script, because of how Mark Ruffalo interprets what he is given and gives that, that added dimension. It's, everybody in this film has their moment to shine, but I was so impressed with Mark Ruffalo's performance as Bruce Banner. He's, he was, Mark Ruffalo strikes me as like a younger Chris Sarandon, and that's a compliment by the way. <laughs> Just the way he looks and the way he speaks and the way he acts, like, he truly understands the character of Bruce Banner. He knows Bruce Banner is more than just a, a timid scientist who is fighting to keep the not-so-jolly green giant inside of himself. He's a, he's, a, he's a rounded human being and he's really trying so hard to, you know, keep control of his nature and it's not easy for him. And in a very terrifying sequence in this film, he starts to change in front of Black Widow, aka Natasha Romanoff, played by Scarlett Johansson. It is such a frightening scene because you see the horror and terror in her eyes as she is watching him turn into this beast. And then it's, he starts to chase her. Like, you have, to, you have to appreciate that whatever trust that might have been between them has kind of, you know, folded back on itself. It's... It really is a, a terrible, yet yeah, really, really good sequence. When I say terrible, I mean really good in terms of the context, but whatever. I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> like I said earlier, everybody in this film has a chance to shine. But of course, Robert Downey Jr. almost steals the show as Tony Stark. It's, it, Robert Downey Jr. isn't even really trying, because this is just his natural charm and his understanding of the character coming through. 
If I had to select a character who I felt was weaker, it would have to be Hawkeye, played by Jeremy Renner. Renner is a good actor, don't get me wrong, but you know what? Hawkeye to me is like, meh. He's a meh sort of character. And I applaud that they tried to give um, Hawkeye some sort of uh, character moments in the film because, you know, he's he's brainwashed for half of it. So he, he can't exactly deliver a, a lot of how he feels on the screen. And it's not until later that he's discussing what he did with Natasha after he's been freed from Loki's mind control with the Tesseract. Um, but generally speaking, Hawkeye, he's not a bad character, but he's not the most exciting one. Um, who else is there? Oh, I can't believe I didn't mention this guy when I was reviewing the other Marvel Phase 1 films. Clark Gregg is Agent Coulson. Coulson is perhaps my favourite Avenger. He's just... Ah, oh, he's, he's so dreamy. He, he's so... He's awesome. He's cool. He's confident. He's super competent at what he does. Like, the, he's... Have have any of you seen that short of which uh, Agent Coulson finds himself in a like a stick up situation in a convenience store and all he wanted was some donuts so he goes to a convenience store and the place gets held up by some you know ne'er do wells and you know Coulson does what Coulson does and he's just so cool I especially love Coulson's sort of a fanboy moment when um he meets Captain America he's like I have all of your baseball cards and he's <laughs> he's he's He's, he's beautiful. I, I love him so much. And, and, even though I love Loki, I totally went, WHAT?! at the moment when Loki killed Coulson. Now, this was before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came out, so, you know, that for the time, it seemed so final. But these days, it's not as simple as that. But when Coulson died, I was just like, oh, NO! I was... I was kind of shocked, but then again, I wasn't, considering uh, Loki's treachery. Um, of course, you have the interactions between Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston in their characters. Uh, and once again, I can't believe I didn't mention, you know, the, the actors' interplay in their, in their first movie, in Thor. They're just... It's just so funny, because Loki does not think very highly of Thor. He thinks he's a complete idiot. And, and he's, he's kind of right. But you really got to hand it to Thor for being so tolerant and the fact that despite all that Loki has done he still loves him. He, he still treats him as his brother even though <laughs> in one of the funniest uh, lines in the movie he's like he's adopted! Yeah. <laughs> but yeah their interplay is just wonderful. I love it so much and um, it's a bit of a shame that Thor 2 The Dark World uh, didn't quite live up to what I was hoping, but that's another review for another time. Uh, what else? Samuel L. Jackson isn't given a lot to do, but he's Samuel L. Jackson wearing eye patch. you know, how, how much better can you get? He fires a friggin' bazooka for crying out loud. <laughs> As I mentioned before, the action is fantastic. The, the whole assault on the, uh, the shield helicarrier is fantastic. You have all these uh, pieces going on at once with all the different characters and it all comes from some sort of dramatic argument. That's what Loki does. Loki actually gets to express his, his true power in this movie is to create discord and distrust. It's just, he does it so damn well and what can I say? Like um, um, a mountain comes out of a molehill essentially for that, for those, for that entire sequence. It's so damn great. The use of CGI is not cloying. It is actually it's actually being used as it should be used. It's used it's used as an emphasis. It's used as a, a means of uh, sort of you know amplifying the action beyond of what you have there. And it's done very, very admirably. Joss Whedon's direction is great. He knows how to get a wonderful performance out of all of his actors. Um, Granted, Joss Whedon is a very controversial figure these days, and I can understand why, but as a director, he understands the importance of the superhero film. He's not doing it for a paycheck, right? He's, he's doing it because he believes in it. He's doing it because it is a passion of his, and when you have somebody who holds that passion so strongly in their hearts, it's really difficult not to commend them on feeling that way. So, I give the Avengers a 4 out of 5. 
I only deduct one point because once again the story isn't very complicated and it's incredibly basic but you know what who needs a story when you have superheroes <laughs> So yeah, that was my very silly review of The Avengers, and that also concludes Phase 1 of the Marvel Superhero Universe. Next, we're going to tackle uh, Phase 2, and hopefully, by the end of it, I'll give you my thoughts on the Age of Ultron. See you later, guys.